On March 27, 2003, a call was made to 911 in Dark County, Ohio. 911, your emergency. And the little boy just ran to our head starting. He said his grandparents are melting. Damien Huffman, who was only four years old, had found the bodies of his grandparents in their home, so he ran over a mile to a daycare to ask them for help. The police were immediately dispatched to the scene, where they would find the bodies of Jack and Linda Myers still lying in their bed. The cause of death had been from a shotgun used at close range. The police believed that it had not been a burglary gone wrong. Nothing was missing from the home, and Jack and Linda had been sleeping in their bed when their lives were taken. Outside, the police would find shoe prints leading up to an open basement window. With little else to go on, the police began looking into Jack and Linda's family. Their youngest son, Greg Myers, had been struggling financially, and he was about to be evicted from his home. It turns out that Greg was in line to inherit the Myers farm in the event that Jack and Linda were no longer alive, while the police were searching the surrounding area for the murder weapon. Detectives bring Greg in for interrogation. The footage you're about to see was filmed over 20 years ago, so at times, the quality can be a little rough. I think anybody you ask will tell you I'm a compassionate man. I know what it's like to go through a divorce. I've been through two. I know what it's like to make mistakes that you regret. But men who care about other people, and you're one of them. There's no doubt in my mind, you are one of them. You're a compassionate man too. Or you wouldn't sit there with the emotions that I see in your eyes. I don't believe me, I am not lying to you. Yes, All you have to do is listen. All you have to do is listen. Want, listen. If you do, I don't want to accidentally sail myself down the river for the I might be if there is evidence. That so you're part. saying I'm not a compassionate no, man? No, I'm not saying you're not a compassionate man. I just want legal advice if guys that's all that's the evidence you have pointing at me. If the guys' case is that strong against me thing I'm worried about if it's that strong against me is what kind of time or whatever if it is that strong against me. That's why I'd rather have legal advice. So you're wanting, you know, to know, you're wanting to know what kind of charges will be brought against the person that did this? Yes. Okay. There's several things that can happen. Before answering Greg's question, the detective receives a call from his supervisor who tells him he has an idea on how to get a confession. The detective leaves the room and when he comes back, his supervisor is with him. I didn't just look something up. We'll get somebody you, we want you to talk to and, and wants to talk to you. They answered your questions from a higher level, okay? Greg, this is Mark Whitaker. Greg, how you doing? He's a supervisor, and he knows his case. Um, he's been doing some talking to the prosecutor, okay? I've been conferred with him what's been going on here. He's familiar with his case, and he's got some stuff that he's explaining to you or talk to you about, okay? I don't want to do Just pay attention to me, man. Okay, Greg, I just want you to sit there and listen to me, okay? I'm going to tell you some things. I don't want you to make any statements. I'm going, to give you, I'm going to ask you a question, which I want to answer to when I'm done saying what it is I've got to say, okay? First of all, Greg, as Detective Trissel had said, I'm very familiar with this case. I guess you could say as supervisor here in investigations, I'm also supervisor over this, over this case, okay? Uh, so I'm familiar with the details. I'm familiar with the evidence. I'm familiar with all these types of things, okay? Um... I've also talked to Detective Crystal about how the interview is going here and, and the point that we've reached with you. And I want to explain something to you. I've been talking to the prosecutor of Dark County. His name is uh, Richard Howe. Okay. And I've been conferring with him in this situation. Um, this case here is um, given the circumstances that an offender has. Uh, killed uh, two persons at one time is a death penalty case, okay? The prosecutor right now is willing to 
uh, not uh, pursue the death penalty specification, which leaves the option of life in prison as the uh, end result on the condition that you give a truthful, entirely truthful statement and even potentially subject yourself to a truth verification device so we know that we got a truthful statement from you. Okay. Um, so the offer is, if Craig confesses right now, the supervisor will ensure that he does not get the death penalty. If Craig confesses after hearing this offer, the confession could be thrown out of court. Confessions from a suspect must be made of their own free will, without any threats or promises of leniency. The concern is that an innocent suspect who is caught in a string of circumstantial evidence may decide to give a false confession because they believe they will be found guilty anyways and they hope to get a lighter sentence. That, that offer's on the table today. It may not be on the table tomorrow, okay? But this is what I want to tell you. You had indicated to me or to the other detectives here, I believe, that um, you wanted, uh, you would, would uh, like uh, maybe some legal advice. So I'm extending this. I'm extending this. There is the possibility, I need to rephrase what I'm getting. There is the possibility for parole after 20 years. Okay. It's light. The sentence would be considered life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years. The parole board decides, and that in those circumstances, it would be a parole board that would decide whether you do or you don't get out after the 20 years of served in this um, situation. The question I have for you, understanding that we're extending this opportunity for you today, and it is in it is it, it will be uh, uh, it will be an exchange for your truthful statement this is the reason we're going to give this offer to you. But the question I have to ask you before we go any further, because I can't talk about this, we, we won't, we can't talk any further if you want legal counsel. So my question to you, do you want legal counsel at this point? If so, we'll stop everything we're doing right here. And we'll go. But do you understand? Let me ask you this. Do you understand everything I just said to you? Yeah, I understand what you said. Too. You're clear about what I'm, what basically what the offer on the table is. Yeah, but if I still want the legal advice, what then? If you uh, want an attorney, then we shut this whole thing down, pack it up, and we walk out. Okay, and we're done talking. That's essentially what the deal is. The supervisor realizes that Greg wants a lawyer, which means the interrogation would come to an end. Before confirming if he really does want one, he explains what the offer is and implies that the offer is only good until Greg asks for a lawyer. Greg now has to make a choice. Ask for a lawyer and potentially receive the death penalty or confess and only receive 20 years. And then what would be legal legalities of that afterward? What, what charge? Mean? Is that what you're asking? Essentially, what I'm saying is, what the prosecutor's telling me is, that offer may not necessarily be on the table tomorrow. When someone shoots and kills two people at the same time, a double homicide, if you will, that meets the state uh, law's requirements for a death penalty. I just want some kind of legal advice, but I would like to be extended depending on what legal advice says. Would that be an option? Not necessarily. I'm not saying it won't, and I'm not saying it will. All I'm telling you is what the prosecutor told me. If you want legal counsel, there's no problem with that. You have a right to legal counsel. If you cannot afford legal counsel, uh, as we proceed with these charges, you will be, let, let me make something, I, I want to make something clear today. You're not going home tonight. Okay. Uh, we're going to, you're going to be placed under arrest and you're going to be charged with aggravated murder. Two counts. 
by telling Greg that he's not going home after the interview. It shows him that the evidence they have is strong enough to get an arrest warrant. Okay, and you're gonna be booked in and processed in, processed in the jail tonight. I don't want any misunderstandings about that. Okay. okay. Do you understand that at this yeah, point? I understand that. Okay, we're very com comfortable with our evidence, All right? I'm not worried about it. Could you maybe talk to the prosecutor, see after I get legal advice? Okay, your question is, is would that same opportunity be available to you at, if you chose to not say anything tonight, but seek legal counsel before making that decision. Is, am I, is that correct? Not necessarily counsel, just advice. Just advice. Okay. Let me ask you this. Do you want an attorney right now? I'd like legal advice anyways from okay. like an attorney or something. All right. Let me see. Let me, let me see what I, let me talk. Let me talk to the prosecutor and see. I okay. So that we do not violate anybody's rights, we're just going to wait until they come back to talk, okay? I just want the legal advice, I'm not trying to say I'm not, won't say talk, but I just want legal advice. I understand. Why they're talking, would I, could I? He's step outside to have a cigarette. I'll check on it real quick. Greg has said on multiple occasions that he would like legal advice. Nothing more about the case should have been said until it was confirmed that Greg did or did not want a lawyer, but instead a deal was offered to Greg. The supervisor will now come back into the room after speaking with the prosecutor a second time. Okay. At this point, the question you're asking me, the prosecutor is not really inclined to uh, give an answer on, okay? He's extending you the opportunity now, whether that opportunity will be available tomorrow or later, we don't know, okay? Um, obviously, when we, when we extend someone an opportunity or an offer, it's obviously because, you know, we want something from you. And what we want from you is a truthful statement about what's going on here. We just want to understand a little better about why and what happened here. Oh. Okay, don't say nothing, please. Okay. <clears throat> so, the, so that's why the prosecutor is extending you this opportunity. I still don't quite understand exactly. I'm asking you, do you want an attorney? And if you do, then we're gonna shut this whole thing down and we'll be done. You'll be, we'll go ahead and book you in and the interview is over. OK, and whether that opportunity is available to you tomorrow or whatever, we can't answer that. Prosecutor's not willing to answer that question. The prosecutor is available, willing to, if you want, do you want to talk to him? If I could un make him understand what I'm getting at. I'm not saying I won't continue interview. I just want some kind of legal advice. OK. In, in our in our situation where we are here right now, we when you say, well, you know, I, I think I need legal advice or I, I kind of like I want to talk to you, but I kind of want legal advice. You're what we call hedging. You're 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 kind of you're you're at the edge of the table and getting ready to jump to the next table, but you're not wanting to do it. You're you're hanging on. You, you can't have your cake and eat it, too, is what I'm saying. I'm. You either, if you want an attorney, then you need to tell me that and we will stop and we'll end this thing because that's the way the rules are. We have to do it that way. Okay. It's all about your rights. It's all about, we don't want you to say something that you feel we coerced out of you later on. Okay. You, if you want legal counsel before you continue any further with this, then what we do is we stop. So I guess I'm asking you, if you want an attorney, then I need to know, is that what you want? Because if you do, we'll stop it and, 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 and arrangements will be made for you to get, get an attorney. But if you want to continue to talk to us, you know, communicate with me here on this. There is an offer on the table. It's your choice whether you want it. But I have to know whether you want an attorney or not. Is there anything about that? Are you confused? Okay. The offer... Offers if I can continue the interview, tell the truth. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm not saying I won't do that. Okay. I just would like legal advice, whether I should or what. I, do you want an attorney? Greg is scared to ask for an attorney because he believes by doing so, he will lose the deal presented to him. Not once during the entire interrogation did Greg say that he didn't do it, and he appears very concerned about what will happen once he confesses. Do you want to talk to the prosecutor? He's probably basically going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you, but would you like to talk to him? Uh, if I could. Okay. The supervisor leaves the room and he returns with the prosecutor. Mr. Meyer? Yeah. Dick Howe, prosecuting attorney for Dick Howe. Yeah. Question or something for me? Well, I think I want to fill in briefly. This question whether you. The law basically is if you make an unequivocal request for an attorney, they have to stop this interview and it's over with, okay? Well, he, and told, me the, it. he told me what was on the table as far as offer. I told you, I talked to him earlier today about the fact that you're willing to come straight out and tell us everything what happened truthful, that I wouldn't pursue the death penalty, okay? Because it's a death case. Mm, I was trying, I don't know if it was related to you, how I'm trying to say it or what. I'm not saying I won't continue an interview with truthfulness, but could I just have legal advice from attorney before I continue. Well, you can always have legal advice for you. <laughs> if that's your right, it, go, go get you well, way you want that. I'm still. I don't know. I'm not going to answer. I don't know. I don't know if tomorrow I, I would give you the same offer, okay? I really don't I, know, to be honest with you. That's what I'd like to know. If I but you're thinking, but, yeah, that's your decision. I can't make that call for you. I can't give you legal advice, okay? I don't represent you. Okay? That's why I was trying to see if what they said to you tried to get what I was trying to say. Well, I, I guess they're just kind of in the quantity because they're not sure if you're really requesting an attorney or not. And I'm not sure either. If, if you are, you know, that's fine. Yes, you're allowed no, to do that. But I was wondering if that would still be on the table after I had some legal advice. It may be. I'm not going to say it is, won't, or will not. Okay. I'm, I do not know everything that they know, okay, at this point. I said, I'm not saying I won't continue, just I'd rather have a little bit of legal advice to know more as far as my end of it. It appears that Greg and the detectives are in a stalemate. They know if Greg talks to a lawyer, he won't be answering any more of their questions and he may never confess. Greg wants a lawyer, but he also doesn't want to receive the death penalty. Well, I still don't understand. Do you want, do you want an attorney? Is that what you want? I mean, that's all we, that's a yes or no question. Well, like I said, <laughs> if the case or, is that strong, I don't want the death penalty, but I was wondering if I could talk to a lawyer, but have you can. The, the answer is yes, you can. Have the offer extended if the case right. is that strong. That's on my. After I see what the attorney says. I'm not going to give you the answer to, okay? Because I, I don't know the answer to that. Because I'm not, I don't know exactly how strong it is, everything is at this point. They're going to search your house right now, I think, is my understanding. I don't know what to define in there. And fingerprints on this tape and stuff like that. That's, we've still got a lot of lab work to do, is my understanding. And maybe there are results back already. I don't know. I don't, I'm not familiar with everything that they know. So I can't answer that. Obviously, the stronger this case is, the less likely I'm going to continue that offer. I said, I'm not saying I won't continue. I just like to know if that offer could be continued after. And my answer is it may, but I'm not going to guarantee it. I would like legal advice, but if the case that strong against me, I don't want to have death penalty. Well, that's a decision that's, you got to make. Yeah. Okay, we can't you're make in, that for you. You're in the position where, um, you know, you're. We'll we'll explain it. If you have questions or there's something that we're confusing you about or you don't understand, you tell us. You just say, "Hey, this is the part I don't understand." 
and we explain it. Now, you had mentioned to me that you pretty much understand everything that we're being that's being said here and what's going on. Is that true? As far as I know. Okay. We've reached a point in the interview where you have a decision to make. You do. Okay. We're not sitting here. Has anybody sat here and tried to force anything out of you? He kept continuing with the same question. Well, because he wants an answer to the question, okay? But that hasn't happened, okay? I mean, nobody sat here and, and said, look, if you don't give me an answer, I'm going to give you a beating. That's not going to happen, okay? Even though they haven't threatened Greg with a beating, it has been implied that if he doesn't confess now, he could get the death penalty. Uh, we're not going to force you to talk. If you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk. What was the first line they read to you when you walked in here tonight? Uh, you have the right to remain silent, right? I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't been here, but I've done enough of these interviews, and I know these guys, and I know that's what they told you. Okay? Am I wrong about that? No. Okay. So you have the right to remain silent. That means you don't have to talk to us if you don't want to, and we're not going to make you. All right? But we reached a point in an interview where you kind of said, well, I, I kind of think I'd like to have legal counsel, but I want that offer still, though, tomorrow. And what the prosecutor here is saying is, I'm not going to promise that officer is going to be there tomorrow. I'm not going to say it will. I'm not going to say it won't. Okay. But I am going to tell you that if you would like tonight, I will not give you the death specification, which would result in life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years are served. That he can tell you if you would choose to talk tonight and get this whole thing straightened out and it's your decision to make and we're not going to make you so, you know okay that he's telling you he's basically going to guarantee that is what the result will be if that's the choice that you choose to make tonight all right but before we continue you have to answer the, sim the question si quite simply yes or no you do we will shut this whole thing down and we're done because that's how the rules are have I confused you by any of the uh, things? I'm trying to make it as clear as I can. Yeah, I know okay. you made it clear. So there we are. I wish so I now the decision is in, in your, we're, we're basically asking you for a decision at this point. Do you want to stop the interview at this point and give you the opportunity to get an attorney or we'll appoint one to you if you don't have the money to do so, okay? The judge will. Uh, that's the choice. Or well, the other choice is, if you want, we'll continue with the interview, knowing that you have the right to legal counsel, but you have given that right up, at least as far as talking tonight, and that you're doing so voluntarily, which means you're doing so by your own free will, and then he can promise that that is the deal that you'll get. So there we go. Either we want to continue with the interview, or we'll stop the whole thing and we'll get you legal. We'll get you legal counsel. What do you want? That's, that's the choice. I can't put it any simpler than that. This is a great example of why detectives are not allowed to make promises during an interrogation. There is a chance that Greg could be innocent, and now he believes that there is more than enough evidence to send him to death row. Realizing that his life might be over, Greg could accept the deal because 20 years is better than dying. And we can't even talk about an offer with you if you've already said you want an attorney. My understanding, though, um, that you've not actually made that determination yet. I've uh, asked him a couple said, of well, times. Do you want an attorney right now? Okay. And I was wondering. Have if you told him that you want an attorney yet? They legal advice, but not specifically attorney. But that's why I was wondering. Well, what do you mean? What's the difference? Even though Greg has not specifically asked for a lawyer, he has asked for legal advice. A good lawyer would argue that asking for legal advice is the same as asking for a lawyer. So everything from that point on could be thrown out. If their case is that strong against me, I don't want the death, death penalty. Mm -hmm. But I would like to talk to get some legal advice from someone to see what I should and do. Someone for sure. than an attorney? Well, an attorney would be the best source of legal advice. In general, yes. <laughs> I'm saying once you've asked for one, they're not worried. We don't, I can't even talk to you about an offer or anything, okay? If you have done that, we're all, we already got to shut this down, okay? And so my question is, have you done that yet? Yes. Have you made an unequivocal request for an attorney, do you think? 
legal advice is all I'm looking for, but I don't know. He like, asked, I don't want he said he kind of would like legal advice, advice, but he but when I but he's never asked for an attorney. Is that correct? Specifically for an attorney. Right. Is that that correct? Your case I've that never heard you say me. I don't want death penalty. That's why he's asking that. We're, 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 it's just not about it's not about how strong the case is against you. Well, it is, and the case is strong against you. That's my opinion as the investigator in this case, or one of the investigators in this case. I'm not worried about this case, okay? All right? Your statement helps us understand why, okay? And allows us to do a few things, okay? But if you don't talk to us today, do I think that that's gonna be detrimental to the case? No, mm -hmm. I'm pretty comfortable with the physical evidence that we have. All right, I mean, that's my opinion, and I'm just telling you how I feel about it as, as the person who's kind of seen what's going on in the, in, in the case against you. Now, quite simply, I want to ask you this question. All right, it's just quite simply yes or no. Do you want an attorney? Yes, yes, why is that? Yes, you want an attorney. Yes, but it's not an answer. <laughs> Do you want an attorney? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, we're done. Okay. Well, that, I don't want to oh, stop the to interview the time. Uh, that's not a promise to be made. We made that clear. The interrogation comes to an end, and Greg is told he is being charged with murder. Hello. Um... We have a gentleman in the interview room. He needs to be uh, booked in and we're gonna charge him with um, probably two counts of aggravated murder. All right. And Greg, you uh, for me? do you have, we probably wanna bring him across the lobby, right? It's all right. You ain't got anything on you, it's gonna poke me or stick me. Okay, why don't you send um, some of your crews down. We'll do that. And then, But I want your guys, since they're gonna take him, we'll, I want you guys to pat him down too, because I mean, if you understand what I'm saying. Hey, yeah, let's, let's take him back through that way. If I do have okay, anything well, other than keys, I don't know about it. He's been real cooperative with us. And, I mean, he hasn't, you know, been rude or aggressive or anything like that. Okay. All right. At this point, the case against Greg was very weak, but that would change in the upcoming weeks. The police were able to find the murder weapon lying at the bottom of the Stillwater River. Near the shotgun, they found a bag that contained the shoes that matched the footprints found outside the home. They also found latex gloves and extra 12-gauge ammo for the shotgun. Because the bag had been sealed, the contents inside were still dry. Inside one of the latex gloves, the police found a fingerprint that belonged to Greg. Along with the fingerprint, the ammo they found was very hard to come by. The only place that sold it was a local Walmart that just happened to have sold a box around the time the murders took place. Walmart had video footage of Greg purchasing the ammo with a gift card, and that same gift card was found in his wallet the day he was arrested. With all the new evidence they had, they did not need Greg's confession. Greg would be found guilty of two counts of murder, and he received life in prison without the possibility of parole. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. How do you feel about how the interrogation was handled? Did the end justify the means? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.